In this video, we will study about rotational kinematics, rotational dynamics, torque, and moment of inertia. This video has been made by Sir R squared referencing Physics for Scientists and Engineers with Modern Physics, 9th edition by Survey and Gillette. University Physics 1, Calculus Base, Philippine Edition by Survey and G. Disclaimer This video is intended as instructional video for engineering students. This video can be downloaded for free at www.youtube.com. This video was uploaded on YouTube by the creator for audiovisual purpose during class discussion and online reference. This video is not regulated by the institution. Any use of this video other than its purpose is a viewer's or user's responsibility. The creator warrant or allow the pre-use of this video only for instruction purpose and reference. Any use of this video other than its intended purpose is a user's responsibility. Learning Objectives At the end of this video presentation, students will be able to learn the following rotational kinematics and rotational dynamics angular displacement angular velocity and angular acceleration analysis model of rigid object under constant angular acceleration Angular and translational quantities, torque, analysis model, rigid object under a net torque, calculations of moments of inertia, rotational kinetic energy, energy considerations in rotational motion and rolling motion of a rigid object. Learning outcomes. At the end of this lecture, students will be able to solve problems involving rotational motion, solve angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration, Analyze and solve problems on rigid objects under constant acceleration. Solve problems involving torque. Solve moment of inertia problems. Solve problems in energy involving rotational motion. Practically apply the concepts and principles of this chapter to everyday life. Let's get started. First of, we study about angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. Suppose we have this disk that is rotated perpendicular to the plane surface, passing through point O, which is the center of the disk. And suppose that we are to choose an object P with the distance of r from the center of the disk and suppose that we have this x-axis as our reference line. After some time, this object will travel, for example, to this point where I'm drawing right now. So p will be in this point after some time. Of course, it will have 
to travel an arc. And that arc is what we call the arc length. Now, this angle that it makes from the reference line is what we call the central angle. Arc length is defined as the distance between two points along a section of a curve. Arc length is denoted by S. So let us denote this by S. In our mathematics, S is equal to R theta. Now, if we are going to solve for theta in this given equation, we will be having theta to be S over R or arc length over the radius, wherein theta is the central angle with unit in radians, S is the arc length in radians, and R is the radius in meter, feet, inches, or etc. We just have to take note that this theta here is in radians. We just have to take note that this is a region. And also, we have to take note that P and theta is measured on a counterclockwise from some reference line fixed in space. So, for example, this is our reference line here. Then this theta is measured on a counterclockwise direction. So this is different from what we are having in our torque. Because our convention in torque or in moments is clockwise to be positive. We must always remember that in rotational motion, theta must be in regions. So if we are given theta in degrees, all we have to do is to multiply that by pi over 180. <laughs> theta in rotational motion is somewhat equivalent or equal to the displacement or delta x in rectilinear motion. The change in theta for the angular displacement is equal to the final position minus the initial position. Let's talk about angular velocity. Velocity is defined as displacement over time. Or in equation form, B is equal to x over t, or in other words, b is equal to the change in displacement over the change in time, or the derivative of x with respect to time. We have to take note that in rotational motion, angular displacement is denoted by theta or the change in angular displacement, delta theta. Now, if we use omega to represent angular velocity in rotational motion, we will be having the same example following the equation of velocity above. Omega will be equal to theta over time, or Omega will be equal to the change in angular displacement over the change in time. Or omega will be equal to the derivative of the angular displacement over with respect to time. So here is the equations for angular velocity represented by omega. 
The instantaneous angular speed, omega, is defined as the limit of the average angular speed as delta t approaches zero. d theta over dt. Wherein, omega is the angular speed or the angular velocity. The unit is in radians per second. Theta is the angular displacement. Unit is in radians. And t is the time in seconds. We take omega to be positive when theta is increasing counterclockwise motion and negative when theta is decreasing in the clockwise motion. We have to take note of this counterclockwise to be positive and negative on a clockwise motion. The average angular velocity is given by the equation omega average is equal to theta sub f minus theta sub i over tf minus ti, or in short, the change in angular displacement over the change in time, wherein omega of is the average angular velocity in regions per second. Theta sub f is the final angular position or displacement in regions. Theta sub i is the initial angular position in regions. Delta sub theta is the angular displacement in radians, and delta t is the change in time in seconds. Let us now talk about angular acceleration. Acceleration is defined as velocity over time, or change in velocity over the change in time. We have learned that during our kinematics. In equation, A is equal to B over T, or A is equal to delta B over delta T, or A is equal to the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Consequently, in rotational motion, we denote acceleration by alpha. Now, the velocity in rotational motion is the angular velocity omega. Therefore, if we are going to uh, follow the uh, definition of acceleration, we will have alpha is equal to omega over t or alpha is equal to the change in omega over the change in time. Therefore, alpha is equal to the derivative of angular velocity with respect to time, wherein alpha is angular acceleration in radian per second squared, omega is the angular velocity in radians per second, and t is the time in seconds. The instantaneous angular acceleration is defined as the limit of the average angular acceleration as delta t approaches zero. The average angular acceleration denoted by the lowercase alpha of a rotating rigid, rigid object is defined as the ratio of the change in the angular speed to the time interval delta t during which the change in the angular speed occurs. Take note that alpha is positive when a rigid object rotating counterclockwise is speeding up or negative when a rigid object rotating clockwise is slowing down during some time interval. 
One of the main objectives of this video is to study the relationship between translational and rotational motion. During our preliminaries, we have studied about kinematics. And in kinematics, we have learned about the three equations. The three kinematic equations are B sub F is equal to B sub I plus AT. That's the first one in translational motion or in kinematics. Consequently, in rotational motion, we will have omega sub F is equal to omega sub I plus alpha T. This is also for constant acceleration. Now, the second equation of kinematics is delta X is equal to BIT plus one half. AT squared. Consequently, in rotational motion, we have theta sub F is equal to theta sub I plus omega sub I T plus one half alpha T squared. That is also for constant acceleration. Therefore, the change in displacement or the angular displacement is equal to the angular velocity sub i multiplied by t plus one half a t squared. If you will notice, they are similar. It is just that we are replacing delta x with delta sub theta. And finally, we have b sub f is equal to b sub i plus 2as. Similarly, in rotational motion, we have omega sub f squared is equal to omega sub i squared plus 2 alpha times the quantity theta sub f minus theta sub i. This is also for constant angular acceleration. Or, we can say omega sub f squared is equal to omega sub i squared plus 2 alpha times the angular displacement. I guess by now we are ready to solve problems involving rotational kinematics. For ease of uploading, we will stop this video for now and be back with video number 2 to start our problem solving. With this, to God be the glory. Thank you.